Whatever you do, don't do this. Hey everyone, today I thought I'd make a quick video about how to replace the connectors on a LiPo battery and do it safely. Um, I'm making this video because I've mentioned a few times recently uh, that it's something that you might choose to do, but I haven't shown how to do it and I have gotten some questions about it. It's actually really easy, but of course there is an inherent danger to working with LiPo batteries. Uh, in the worst case, you could cause a short, uh, ruin some equipment, let the magic smoke out, or even cause a LiPo fire. And that would be no fun because you can't even put out a LiPo fire with a regular um, fire extinguisher. So we want to avoid that. Today I'm going to show you how I do it, uh, some tips that will hopefully help keep you safe and maybe make it a little bit easier at the same time. Today I'm going to demonstrate it using this 350 milliamp hour 1S battery. It's got a pH2, but I'm going to replace it with the BT 2.0 connector. That's what I did uh, with these batteries, and I've been flying it uh, with my HX100SE. This is a sweet combo, but there aren't any batteries like this, so you got to be able to replace the connector. Uh, you probably saw this in my previous flight videos. Um, but I've been doing this for a long time, actually. Uh, these batteries used to be the only thing uh, appropriate size for a 2S Whoop uh, before 2S Whoops became popular. So I would have to replace them with the XT30. Even back then, I found that that improved the performance. And I used that on builds like this, my original 2S Whoop. You could even use the same technique to change the connector on a giant battery like this one. Okay, so there's basically two dangers uh, that you want to watch out for. The first and most obvious is the danger of causing a short. You never want these two wires to touch each other or have anything conduct that touches both of them. For example, cutting both wires at the same time would be convenient because you could get the two wires exactly the same length, uh, but your metal tool would conduct electricity and you'd get a short right there. So you're going to want to do one wire at a time so there's no chance that they can connect. And the other danger is heat. If... Uh, if your soldering iron is really hot and it's on here for a long time, that heat is going to back up into the battery and you don't want that. Um, it could desolder inside of here or damage the tabs inside, which are really small and delicate. Um, or you could heat up the cells. That'd be bad too. So you want to work quickly with the connection here. Of course, before you make any cuts at all, it's worth taking the time to test fit the battery on your drone so you can figure out what length you want the wire to be. On this one, I went with a really short wire because this pigtail is pretty long and it fits nicely like that. Um, if you had a shorter pigtail, you would want a longer wire here. And so those are things to consider. Make sure that it will come around nicely. If both of them are long, then you get this bunching up of cord in the back. And that's bad because it could snag on things uh, or catch the props. Now, you may want to make it as short as possible in order to save weight. Uh, but there are two things to consider with that. One, we're going to put heat shrink on here. And if it's too short, then you've got nowhere to work with uh, for your heat shrink. And also when you're disconnecting the battery, you never want to pull on the wires. You always want to be able to grab the actual connector. And if it's really short, then, you know, it could be hard to get your fingers in there. So figure out what length you want, and then you'll be ready to make a cut. It doesn't matter which wire you start with, but I'm going to start with the black one, and I'm going to cut it at about the midpoint. Cut through there. Now this red wire is going to stay in the connector, safe and away from this one, until this one is fully done. I'm going to trim just a little bit of the silicone off of the wire, and then I'm going to tin this wire and the connector. I'm going to use this helping hands tool to hold onto the connector. If you don't have one of these, uh, you might be able to tape this down to the desk or just find something else to hold it steady for you. Now I'm going to get some heat shrink. This stuff starts at 2.4 millimeters and shrinks down to 1.2, so I think it'll work well for this wire size. Here's a piece of it here. I'm just going to cut two pieces of it to the same length. Now you're going to want to push this down as far as you can away from the solder point because if too much heat gets on here, of course it'll shrink up early. Last step before I solder on the connector, I'm going to take a bit of this flux paste and put it right on the end. If you haven't used Flux before, I'd really suggest you go check out some YouTube videos on how to solder with Flux. It's going to help the solder to flow quickly and easily, make a good joint, and help it to go faster so we don't have heat messing up our heat shrink and going into the battery. Now we're ready to solder it to the connector, but first you have to double check that you know which side is positive and which is negative. If you're not sure, uh, look it up online or look at your drone, figure out which one has the red wire and black wire. If you get these crossed, uh, it probably will fry your board. The BT2 is just like XT30 or XT60. The flat side right here is positive. The curved side is negative. The connector is a little more solid than the wire, and so I'm going to actually start by heating up the connector first. Once I can see that the solder is hot on there, I'll bring this wire in. Okay. 
Hopefully you can see that that solder joint is nice and shiny. I've got the heat shrink down here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is bring the heat shrink all the way up to cover every bit of that solder joint. If I apply a little bit of heat from below, that'll make the heat shrink shrink up. Now I can safely repeat the steps for this wire because there's no way it can touch that black wire while it's in the heat shrink. The important thing is that you don't wanna work with both of these electrodes connected and exposed at the same time. When working with small wires like this, it can be really handy to have a pair of forceps. I'm gonna use this to hold the red wire while I put it on. And there's the finished product. The last thing to do before you plug it into your drone would be to triple check that you got positive and negative on the right side. If you used a multimeter uh, plus on red minus on black, then you should get a positive voltage. I can test it right here with this battery checker. And there we go. This thing is about storage charge. So it's all done. Now you might be wondering why you would or would not change a connector or what connector to use when. Those are great questions, but it's not the topic of today's video. Uh, if you want to know more about these BT 2.0 connectors, you can check out my review of the Meteor 65. You might also be wondering how to do the same thing to one of these stick batteries. Uh, that can be done, but I'm not going to show it in this video. It's actually a lot more difficult and more dangerous because you're working with the tabs right there exposed. Um, and the actual tabs that come out of the battery are really fragile and easy to damage. Um, I've ruined one of these batteries already doing that. So if you're going to do it to 1S batteries, then I recommend you get the ones with wires like I showed here um, and only do it to stick batteries like this uh, if you're really confident in your soldering. If you're watching this video right when it comes out, then it's Thanksgiving weekend right now, and I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, I hope you had a great time with family and friends anyway. And if you like shopping for deals, then a lot of the Black Friday sales continue on through Monday, uh, Cyber Monday, and you can check out down in the video description. I've collected a whole bunch of codes and links, uh, so that might help you out as well. I hope this information is helpful for you. I hope it helps you get out there and enjoy the awesome and ever-changing hobby of micro FPV. Fly safe.